If God say he going to move for you this week, and then all of a sudden all hell break loose against you this week, and you stop believing what God said he was going to do, like it or not, your mind has become defiled. Now notice Daniel 1 in verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and goodwill with the chief of the eunuchs. So Daniel said to the steward in verse 11, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servant for 10 days. And let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. See, see, King Nebuchadnezzar's food was dedicated to, again, uh, the god Baal. And so Daniel didn't really want to eat food that they had just uh, dedicated to sacrifice to Baal. So he wanted to eat vegetables and drink water. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill and literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams and in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them. He found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in his realm. Let's give God a praise for the subject tonight. A fixed mind. Your mind is the seat of intellect or intelligence your mind is the seat of intellect or intelligence your mind also has to do with the plays where you reason or where you perceive it is in the mind that we perceive uh things and that's where we the perception the makeup of our per perception takes place within our mind and so if my mind is not in the place that it need to be, then it can throw off my perception. It can throw off how I see things. It can, it can throw off how I reason when it come time to make certain decisions. I can easily choose to do the wrong thing instead of the right thing because my mind is not in the place it need to be. And so when I go to make a decision, Again, I choose wrong primarily because my mind is not where it needs to be. Thirdly, your mind has to do with the seat of one's feelings or your emotions. You have to understand how powerful the mind is because when, when folks say stuff like my, my emotions are all out of whack or I don't feel the way that, that I know I need to feel, you have to understand that's not your literal heart that is controlling your feelings like so many of us think. That's not the organ that is primarily responsible for pumping blood through, through the body and so forth. No, when, when your emotions or your feelings are not in the place they need to be, that's dealing with your mind. It is your mind that controls your, your emotions. And, and we need to not only get our minds right, but we need to work hard at keeping our minds right. How, how many can agree with that tonight? How many can agree that you will do better in life when your mind is in the place it need to be? Daniel was purposed in his heart when King Nebuchadnezzar was trying to get him to change for the worse. Daniel was purposed in his heart or in his mind that he was not going to change for the worse. Can I say to us tonight, we also have to be fixed in our mind when things and people try to cause us to change for the worse. You need to have a fixed mind that says, I'm not changing for the worse. That if any change take place, it's going to be for the better. Because I mean, no, we're not God. We will change, but we have to make sure that the change that takes place in our life is always for the better and never for the worse. I don't want to change for the worse. I don't got too mature in God to change for the worse. I knew too much about the word of God to change for the what? Worse. To allow a situation to change me for the worse. I know too much about the power of God and how God can change situations. So why allow a temporary situation to make you change for the worse when you serve a God who's in charge of the situation? God is in charge of the circumstance. Come on. In that he has the final what? 
You have to know that when you're dealing with circumstances. God got the final say. Not the doctor, not the lawyer, not the supervisor. God. God has the final say. And that's the reason I don't want to change for the worse. I want to be purposed to change for the better. Amen? And so he didn't want to, he didn't want to make himself dirty or foul or he didn't want to become unclean by doing something that he knew would be wrong. Or by doing something that he had been taught was not right, then for him to flip because pressure was put on him to do a particular thing, Daniel knew that would be to defile himself. And so, and so he, had to be, he had to be purposed or he had to have a fixed mind. Also received tonight that to defile yourself would be to do, say, or think anything contrary to God's will or God's word. When you do, when you say, and when you think contrary to the will of God, like it or not, your mind is defiled. If God say he going to move for you this week, and then all of a sudden all hell break loose against you this week, and you stop believing what God said he was going to do, like it or not, your mind has become defiled. If God say he going to manifest healing in your body, but then the doctor say you will never get well, and you believe the doctor more so than God, like it or not, your mind is dirty. You need to clean up your mind. Your mind needs to be washed with the word. Your mind needs to be washed with the word that said by his stripe, you are, watch this, already healed. It's, it's a past tense, already done. But when I don't trust God, like it or not, my mind dirty. When folk are threatening to take something from you, yet God has told you that you ain't going to lose nothing, yet you get fearful and stressed out about losing what God said you would not lose, your mind has become defiled because you're not trusting God the way that you need to. You're not trusting him. Even when you can't trust God unless you see everything, unless you know everything, unless you understand everything, like it or not, your mind is carnal or defiled because we have to trust God past what we can see. Oh, come on, somebody. That's a good word tonight. I said, you got to trust God beyond what your eyes can see. I don't see how he going to do it, but I know that he going to do it. I don't see how this can happen, but with God, how many things are possible? How many things are possible? How many things are possible? Share with your neighbor. Ain't nothing too hard for God. Listen, I don't know what you're going through tonight, but don't let your mind get defiled. Don't let your mind get defiled. To the point to where you distrust your God. Listen, you distrust your God despite how far he has brought you to this present moment. Yet you allow something to make you think God is lying to you. That's what it would be like for some of us to doubt God right now as far as he has brought us. Woo! He brought us through danger seen and unseen. Brought us through despite what our enemies said. Brought us through despite our credit report. Brought us through despite the doctor's report. Brought us out of things that folks still amazed that we come up out of. And now you going to get here and doubt God? The same God that allowed you to slay that other giant. He going he gonna to empower you to slay the giants that are before you tonight. If you will believe him. If you will trust him. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say God done did too much for many of us for us to doubt him about what we're going through now. He's just been too good. He's proven himself. And I know there are some folk in church tonight that no matter what you go through, you're going to keep that fixed mind. You, you know God is God. Come on, you know God is in charge. God is the boss man. Come on, God is the shot caller. The Bible goes so far as to say that it is God that lifts one up and pulls one down. See, some of us, we don't know that. It's going to be impossible for some folk to convince some of us that ain't no God. We, 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 you just crazy. You might as well get that trash up out of here. Ain't no God? Then who saved me? Some of us are going to say, who got me off them drugs? Who, who got me out that crack house? Who got me out the clubhouse? You know it, we know it was God that brought us through, right? Before I move on, one reason we know is because time after time, many of us tried to deliver ourselves, but we couldn't. 
But when we called on the name of Jesus, when we put it in God's hand, when we ask God for some help, for some mercy, for some kindness, for some favor, for some money, for some resources, for some healing, for some power, for some boldness. Did he come through? Yeah. 